Hey guys, how's it going? We're out here again on the uh, CB1100. We're going to be doing a pros and cons list for everybody today. And I think it should be, uh, should be a good one. We're going to take, uh, take some back roads. Let's get it going. Be sure that you guys are wearing full gear when you're out here whenever you can maybe you don't need gloves this technical and stuff but I don't know if you can see the uh, the gear here I got leather leather uh, speedy pants on I got a speedy jacket it's armored I don't have my airbag vest but I do own an airbag vest I probably should wear that more it's just kind of big and bulky but I really should wear it more and I got a good deal from with uh, all this gear I think I came from Modal Storm over in Italy yes it did so I can put a link to them in my description if you want to order from them they import everywhere to the US and it's a pretty good deal and anywhere else in the in the world as far as i know all right let's get rocking all right guys we're out here on the big cb 1100 so we're doing ourselves a uh, pros and cons list today and uh the first thing i'm going to mention is got used to having a uh, a shift indicator or you know a gear indicator on my MT-07 that I've been riding a lot lately and now uh, this doesn't have one and you don't realize how like reliant you become on that when you have it because now I got to remember what gear I'm in and I guess on the uh, MT-7 I just I'm glancing down a lot more than I think I am so interesting all right that's not really a pro or a con but it's just kind of something I noticed. So the first pro, number one, this is the smoothest shifting motorcycle I've ever owned. It is incredibly smooth. And it doesn't have a quick shifter, of course. I have a speed triple that has a quick shifter and that's real smooth. But this is for no quick shifter, it almost feels like it has one. It's crazy. When you're off the throttle, you can, you know, you can downshift, you can upshift, whatever you need to do. And it is just incredibly smooth. I've never really I was not expecting that at all on this bike when I bought it. And um, I took it for a test ride, you know, and then I discovered, I was like, holy cow. It's uh, pretty uncanny. There's not really a way for me to describe this. You have to go out and ride one. Unless you own one already, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, the current oil, as far as I can tell, is Honda oil because it's red. I'm going to do an oil change soon. I bought GN4 for it. So it's either like, you know, HP4, the synthetic stuff, or GN4 currently in the bike. I'm not sure, but it is red, so it's probably the Honda stuff. And uh, I tend to use a little more body position on this bike than I do with others because the ground clearance isn't as great. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So that was the first one. The smoothness of the shifts is amazing on this bike. All right. Pro number two is the brakes. I don't think there's anyone behind me, is there? No. So I can show you the brakes up here after we get past this uh, corner. But the brakes are, they bite how you would want them to. They're not kind of squishy. Like my MT7 is a bit squishy in the brakes. Uh, when you get on it. I mean, it's fine once they're loaded up and stuff, but, like, the initial bite is not great. But the, this is a totally different story. The brakes on this bike are real nice. Okay, nobody behind me. Brake check. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're just... It is just absolutely excellent. That was... Didn't apply much there at all, and it brings... It hauls you down. This bike weighs about 550 pounds, and those brakes are... In my opinion, you don't need any more, not for the street anyway. The bite's great, the feel's great. These levers are aftermarket levers the previous owner put on. Um, they work They work fine, they're great, they're adjustable. Um, I don't think they're not real hot, they're not very high dollar as far as I can tell, but they work good. All right, so that was number two, the brakes. I do enjoy the brakes in this bike. And uh, let's see, number pro number three here, as we go through this corner, pro number three, is gonna be the uh, the big motor in this. this the big motor is great for uh, like traveling and touring and being on the freeway. This thing loves, that's a big bump back there. This thing loves being on the freeway and traveling at like highway speeds. It's really smooth at those speeds. That is just, this is just a very smooth bike overall. Let's do a little pull here. here 
let's get down check the brakes oh yeah man those are some good brakes all right fastest bike in the world but it's pretty quick all right so yeah the motor on this is great for touring and long distance travel it's real smooth it uh, gets on the when you're on the freeway um, the rpms are low enough you know where it's comfortable and it's really a, a, a good long distance bike it's not probably not as great of a it's not as great of a, of a back roads carver as like my mt7 or something like that but it is excellent at its intended purpose, which is cruising and, and uh, long-distance travel, things like that. So yeah, I, I do I do think the motor is just great on this. It's air-cooled as well, and um, I've never had any overheating issues, even when it sat for a while. And um, you know, I, I ran in to get some stuff when I first bought this bike, and it, the battery was like needed to be charged, and I had to leave it running. No overheating problems at all. All right, number four is the, I would say the Ergos in this bike. They're just about perfect. I have the stock seat on it right now, but I also have a, uh, it also came with a Corbin seat, comfort seat, but the stock seat, I actually prefer this, I would say, for like if you're going back roads and you're gonna get aggressive. The Corbin, the, the way the butt, the, like the butt shelf in the Corbin, it's kind of weird, at least for me, and it doesn't lend itself very well to like aggressive riding, at least not in my experience, but some people might like it. Anyway, but the ergos, the bars, the uh, the pegs down there, everything is kind of in the right spot for comfort. And it's not, I mean, it's not extremely low or like, ex you know, like, it's not like you're riding a Harley, your feet aren't like way out in front of you or anything like that. I would stop here and show you the ergos some more, but sometimes there's a dog back there that's loose and I don't want to get the dog all riled up. So yeah, anyway, it's not like your legs are, you know, like out here or something like this, but they're they're not overly bent and they're not, it's not rear sets. It's kind of a good standard position. You're slightly leaned forward. It's not, um, let me go down a gear here. Looks like there's some trash in this corner. This corner is usually kind of trashy. Yeah, you can see that there where it kind of wanted to, wanted to lose it a little bit. You can't be aggressive in that corner. Anyway. Yeah, you gotta like a little bit of a lean if you wanna have your elbows, you know, kind of bent a little bit. It's fine, you can kind of get down behind the little uh, Puig windscreen that's on here. And it's good. Or you can go like, you can just relax, slide a little bit forward, get your arms almost straight. You don't wanna ride completely straight arms, but get your arms almost straight, you sit here like this, and you're almost like perfectly straight up and down. So you could ride on this without any, you know, uh, back, tightness or stiffness going on you'd be perfectly fine or if you want to get aggressive you can slide back in the seat because there's some room in the seat in the stock one you can get down in it here and you get some gains I know I've seen people wheeling this too like uh, John's Moto Garage he's wheeling the CB 1100 and um, so obviously it'll do it if you know how to clutch it up properly and stuff but wheelies are not really my thing I'm practicing a little bit on the MT7 just a little bit here and there but it's not really my joint but if you want to do some of that you can got some people outside over there yeah so that was number four was the ergos in this baby the ergos are great for comfort if you're looking for comfort and you can get a little aggressive on it too if you want to slide back you know but it's not like the bars aren't back on top of you where they're like you're just like totally relaxed it's a little bit sporty a little bit maybe along the lines of that bmw r1150r i had that might have had actually slightly more lean to it than this one than this does all right got a the blind crest coming over here that would be a different video i think what to do when you come up to blind crest like this roll off the throttle a little bit take a look before you just hammer over it Woo! Oh man, the power band. The power band's about four and a half there, a thousand it looks like. Starts pulling. Below that it doesn't, uh, it's fine, but it doesn't have a lot, of, a lot of pull below that. All right. We'll do uh, pro number five here, then we'll start getting into the cons. 
So pro number five is the maintenance. It's a Honda, you know, so the maintenance is going to be uh, not very significant, let's say, at least in my experience. And also, it's air-cooled, so you don't have to worry about radiator fluid, radiator flushes, none of that kind of stuff. So you've got that benefit of less fluid changes throughout the year. And I think uh, it just does have a chain, so you're going to have to do your chain maintenance and you know oil that and make sure that's tight. But otherwise, it's uh, going to be less maintenance than something with a radiator. So you've got a bit lower maintenance, plus it's a Honda, so you've got an air-cooled Honda, and it's modern 2013. So it's pretty cool that they re-released this bike. Let's do bonus pro. Bonus pro, the styling, if you like this kind of thing. The styling in this, it looks like a legitimate classic cruiser. As far as as far as I'm concerned, it's got it's air cooled. It's got the classic style tank. It's got uh, exposed dual rear shocks. Um, you know, you could even throw like white wall tires in this if you wanted to to get that look. But the looks are a pro for me at least. Just one of the main reasons I bought it too is I really like like the looks and I wanted to do a little more cruising instead of the high adrenaline, you know, crazy stuff. <laughs> which we'll also do a video of that, probably coming up next on this bike, hit some twisties. Okay, the cons. The cons on this bike. Uh, let's start with the clearance. The lean, do the lean clearance on this is not great. I'm not that aggressive of a rider, but I've, I even scraped the exhaust on the right side of this just a little bit. You can see it's not bad, but, um, so when I do the, the next video, I'm gonna be doing some more body position so that doesn't happen. But yeah, the clear and even under the bike, the clearance under the bike is not great either. It's just not fantastic. Um, so the clearance is not great on this. You have to use more body position if you're going to be aggressive. That's just kind of how it is. And um, kind of to be expected, this kind of bike though. There's no feeler pegs on the on the. Um, there's no feelers in the bottom of the pegs right now in this bike, and I'm probably going to need to replace that because there should be. Because you don't want to get on the exhaust again, or at least I don't want to. All right, so the second con on this bike, con number dos. We're coming up to a stop sign up here. The second con is, if you're looking for modern like performance, like speed, it is not that fast. Now, if you get above four and a half thousand, like we were earlier there, and you get in the power band, I'll let this guy go by so we can talk for a second here. You get in the power band and uh, you, you're giving her some cranks, you know, it's pretty good. It's pretty quick, but it's not going to have like that face melting modern, like, you know, speed triple, like even, even MT-09, this has got like a hundred horse, but it doesn't have like that MT-09, I missed my shift there, it doesn't have a, that, like that big massive pull. It has enough. The torque's pretty good. It feels good. But it's not like, um, it's not going to light your hair on fire. But this isn't really supposed to do that. It's not, that's not really the point of this motorcycle. It's more of a, supposed to be a bit of an enjoyable ride, right? Which it is. So, still pretty quick. But it's not like crazy quick. But it's smooth. So when you are going fast, Sometimes it's hard to tell you're going fast, which is crazy to think about. So that was con, that's the second con I would say is, if you're looking for modern sport bike performance or something like that, which I don't think guys who are buying this are, but just to let you know, it's not like ripping off arms fast. Would it be a good beginner bike? Hmm. I don't think so. I mean, could you? Yeah, maybe if you had some little bit of previous experience on like the dirt and stuff. You could probably do it as a beginner, but it sure is a big, kind of a too big of a bike for that. In my opinion. But, you know, people people ride bigger stuff than this for the first bikes. I got a, had a friend who uh, had a uh, <laughs> CBR 1000 for his first bike, so... I mean, anything's, anything's possible if you want to try it, I guess. All right, con number three is the exhaust sound on this bike, at least for me, even with a Dalkovic exhaust. It's just not very loud. You can't really hear the bike when you're riding it, the exhaust. You can a little bit. Maybe you can hear it on the video. 
but especially in my other Max Light helmet, which has more a lot more wind projection than this uh, HJC R411 that I've got on right now, you really can't hear the bike at all. And for some people, maybe that's a pro actually if you want a quiet bike. But if you're looking for something with uh, some sound on it, this bike is uh, pretty quiet. So um, that can probably be you know remedied by a really aggressive exhaust or something if they make them for this bike, which I'm I'm not sure about. To be honest with you, because I haven't uh, researched the different types of, types of exhaust for this motorcycle, but it's just not a very like aggressive bike. So that's going to go into the last con here, and oh, maybe it'll be the last con, unless something else comes to mind here as we finish this off. But the last con is it's just not um, it's not very sporty. Like it doesn't it doesn't feel sporty in a traditional sense. It's probably sporty for like a 70s bike. And I've had a couple of other, when I started riding, I had a couple of 80s bikes to get me started, like a Honda CM400 and the CX500 Transverse. And um, this is probably just equally sporty with those as far as like turning radius and, I mean like lean angle and things like that. This is a little better than those, I would say, as far as uh, handling. But it's not like, if you're looking for something really sporty, like something that you can cruise on, but it's also sporty, I guess it depends on what your experience is, but in my opinion, it's not, it's just, it doesn't feel aggressive. The bike is real smooth, which is great if you're looking for that, but it's smooth in a way that just doesn't lend itself to aggressive riding, if that makes sense. It doesn't really have the lean angle for it, and it's like it doesn't really want to do it. Like, it, it, you can make it do, I mean, you can make it do anything, but it doesn't seem to be happy like up in the twisties hammering it but we're gonna go we're gonna test that in the next video here in a minute but i think that's that can be the final con i think and it's just not super sporty but if you were looking for that you'd probably buy something else right you probably wouldn't be buying a cb 1100 if you're looking for a massive sport machine but all in all i think this is a great bike and we'll kind of end this with what we what I normally do is, who is this bike for, in my opinion? And, and, and uh, as a disclaimer, these are all just my opinions. I am not an expert. I've owned a, quite a few different motorcycles, and, you know, you can see in my channel, I've got a, quite a few different reviews and such. That does not make me an expert motorcycle journalist. All right, nobody coming. So who is this bike for, in my opinion? I think it's for somebody who loves the look of retro bikes, the 70s stuff, but you don't want to buy a 70s bike because of reliability and you want fuel injection which this has and some of the newer models of this also have uh, front and rear ABS this is a rear only ABS model uh, and it's also for the guys who like want to cruise and do some distance but also kind of have that uh, have that classic look so I would say it's For, you know, guys in the cruiser market that are wanting something classic looking, something that people are going to, uh, it can be a you know, talking piece, you pull up to somebody, hey man, nice old bike, right? Oh, it's a 2013 or whatever, 2015, 2016, whatever year you, you bought, right? These aren't uh, sold anymore, new here in the U.S. at least, but they are overseas still, I believe. So you can still get your hands on new models, I think. But here in the U.S., they've been discontinued. But on the used market, they're pretty good. You can get these for a pretty good price in some in some markets. They're not expensive, especially for the size of the motor. You get an 1140cc motor for a bargain, basically. And this one has 12,000 miles, so they can, you can have them for pretty good deals. So if you're looking to cruise and have a vintage cruiser on a budget and you want a big motor, like an inline four like this, that can do low RPM on the highway, this is this is the ticket for that. I do believe, and it also has enough performance where you can go riding with your buddies and some twisties and not feel like you're just completely out of place, at least in my opinion. It can still hang, because it does have the power. You got, 100, you got 100 horsepower and enough torque to keep up, and if you know how to ride, I mean, it's you can keep up on almost anything, I guess, if you're riding twisties, but even on the straights, this will, this will do okay. So. Good, good bike, another good bargain. Kind of like this is kind of feels like along the lines of the R1150R that I had, the BMW. It's kind of like that. It's kind of a good cruiser. You can do some sporty stuff to it. It's super smooth, and uh, it just feels good. And and the prices are right on the used market. It's it's kind of like a Honda version 
Like if you don't want to get a BMW because you're worried, or maybe you don't have a dealer in your area or something like that, you know, you can't, can't get it serviced easily, can't get parts, things like that, this could be a good alternative for you, in my opinion, having owned both. It's just real smooth like that. It doesn't have the tail lever system like the BMW did, but you know what, it kind of feels like that almost. Just the way that, God, it's, it's just incredibly smooth. But we better end this video because it is getting late. Not just late in the day, as you can see, but the video is probably going to be, uh, I don't know what this is going to be, 15, 16, 17 minutes. We'll see after it's edited. But I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching again. I hope you're all doing well. And remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy this motorcycle content. And uh, leave any uh, comments below if you have any questions about this bike for me or anything like that. Or any suggestions for upcoming videos. But I do appreciate you guys. And we will catch you in the next one. Bye, everybody.